Today on The Joy of Editing, we're going to get a look at the latest update for the TK Gen Fill Panel. Now, with inspiration, are you ready to get inspired? Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I'm pleased to announce a new update for the TK Gen Fill Panel. This is version 1.4.0 and it is absolutely free. I'll have a link in the description below this video where you can grab the new TK Gen Fill Panel for absolutely free. Now, if you've already downloaded the TK Gen Fill Panel, do Tony Kuiper a favor and use your original download link to get the new panel, okay? In other words, don't go to the site and just grab a new panel. Use your original download link. If you've lost that link or can't find it, then just click on the uh, download link in the description below this video and get the new update. And also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel and click the bell notification. That way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified. But make sure you click on all that you'll receive all notifications. When you do that, you're really helping out my channel. And I really want to thank all of you out there who watch on a regular basis and subscribe and like and share. Thank you so much. Well, are you ready to check out this new panel? Now, what is this inspiration all about? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. First off, let's go ahead and get a blank canvas out here. Now, that's what these buttons are here for. This is a one by one aspect ratio or a square aspect ratio. This would be a four by three landscape, three by four portrait or 16 by nine like a wide screen. And uh, so we're just going to pick one of these and let's go with a four by three landscape. And if I click on size, you can see that the size of this is right here. The pixel dimensions are 1408 pixels by 1024. I'm just going to click cancel just so you understand what size of an image we're working with. And that size corresponds to the size of images you get when you're using Firefly Image 1, when you're using Adobe's website for Firefly. Image 2 beta images are larger, but they're not yet here in Photoshop. We're still using Firefly Image 1. Hopefully in the near future, Image 2 will come over to Photoshop. And then we'll have larger sizes. Now you'll notice right here, this is where we type in our prompt. However, we can come and click on inspiration and we can type our prompt in right here, which is really cool. But look at all this stuff in here. What's this all about? Now, inspiration is about generating images right inside of Photoshop, but this inspiration menu has all the different things that you could do up at the Adobe Firefly website. In other words, movements like Art Deco, Art Nouveau, Baroque, whatever. Themes, techniques, effects, materials, concepts. And I'll show you how this works. Color and tone. Do you want black and white? Cool tone. Golden monochromatic. What kind of lighting do you want? Backlighting, dramatic light, composition, a close up macro photography, shallow depth of field, shot from above. This is all really cool here. Plus, you can type your prompt in right up here. You can reset it. I'll show you how this all works. This is really interesting. And then, just like at the Firefly website, you can choose a content type like photo, graphic, art, or none. Now, who would this inspiration menu be for? It would be for those of us who want to generate something in Photoshop using artificial intelligence. In other words, we prompt something in there and then we get some form of an image back. Be that a maybe some sort of a painterly type image like something emulating an oil painting. Even a photograph. It, it could just be anything that we want to just come up with a concept with a prompt and then generate that image using artificial intelligence. And I realize that this is not something for everybody out there, but if you're into this kind of a thing, if you like artificial intelligence and you want to generate some images, then inspiration is for you. All right, then let's give this a try. I already have a prompt here we're going to use. So I'm going to come up here to the prompt field and I'm just going to right click and paste. I already have a prompt here. It's a very simple prompt, a garden with butterflies and flowers in bloom. Now, Let's pick a content type. I recommend that you start here. Now it defaults at none. You can just leave it at none and see what Firefly artificial intelligence can do for you. Or in my case, I'll use art. 
Of course, we also could use graphic or photo, depending what you want, but let's use art. Now, I want you to take notice that art went to the front of my prompt with a comma, so that's pretty cool, right? Now, if I click reset, what's going to happen? Well, let me click it and let's find out. I'll click reset. Art went away, but my prompt stayed in there. So whenever you click reset, your prompt will stay. But any one of these other types you choose, like let me just click on some of these. Like let me click on uh, this checkbox for Art Deco, say Psychedelic Art and Pattern Pixel, just for the heck of it, right? Now, by the way, you don't have to click on the checkbox. You can click on just the name of something like Pop Art. I don't have to click its checkbox. You can just click Pop Art and it gets checked on. Now notice, you can see here, art is at the front because that's the content type. It always goes at the front, but then these other checkboxes, they end up at the end of the prompt, like Art Deco, Psychedelic Art, Pattern Pixel, Pop Art. And by the way, you can unselect one of these just by clicking on it again, like notice Pattern Pixel. If I click on Pattern Pixel here again, it goes away, right? So you can check or uncheck anything off and then if you click reset, it resets anything that you've checked on, including the content type. So let me click on art again. Now, before we go ahead and get serious and start checking off some things here, notice things that I have here in orange. These are things that I've favorited. Now, this is really cool here. You can't do this up on the Firefly website, but here in Photoshop, we can. If you have a certain... Um, style that you really like, like say for instance, you always like to use fantasy. You can right click any one of these names and then that will save it as a favorite. It turns orange. Now to unfavorite anything, simply right click it again and it goes away. Now you can right click on the checkbox or right click on the name. It doesn't really matter, but anything you see in orange is something you favorited. But now I can see everything that's highlighted in orange. These are the things that I really enjoy using with my prompts. So that makes it really handy. Now you have to agree, this is a huge list, isn't it? Which gives us tons of options. But when you favorite things, it really makes it simple. Because I like to use hyper-realistic a lot. So for this image, I'm going to click on here. So now it's checked. And you see it says hyper-realistic up here. And also I want to use digital art. Art, a garden with butterflies and flowers and bloom, hyper-realistic digital art. Now what do I do, Dave? Well, simply click OK, and when you do, there's your prompt right there, all typed out for you. You can type in here if you want to, or you can just click on Inspiration again and type in here. I like to do it here. You have a bigger field to do all your uh, prompting here, so if you want to have a big prompt, you have a lot of space to write it. I'm just going to click OK again. But now all we need to do is click Generate, and let's see what kind of a result we get. And here's our result. Now remember, you get three different versions with uh, Gen Phil in Photoshop. So here's our first version, and then see this arrow right here, and you can see one. If you click this, you'll toggle to the next one. There's our second one, and we'll go one more time. I'll click it one more time. Here's our third. So I got three really nice results. Now, the cool thing is I can come back and click Inspiration and go and say, okay, that was pretty cool, but let me try something else. I still want hyper-realistic, but this time I don't want digital art, so I'm going to click digital art, and it becomes unselected. I think I want to try cut paper art, and you can see I have it listed under materials, and it's highlighted, because this is one I always like to try. This is a cool one. So let's click on cut paper art. Now, just to give you a little tip here, you can use as many of these as you want, but if you get too many, you're going to muddy up the waters and you're going to get results that you're not going to be too happy with because you'll go too extreme and you'll kind of confuse the artificial intelligence. And you don't want to do that. So you want to keep your prompting list on the shorter side. Just use the prompts that you feel you'll need to really help out your image, okay? Experimentation is the key to learn how this process all works. Now remember, up until November 1st, we have commercial access to Firefly here in Photoshop. We can generate as many images as we want. So now's a good time to learn and see how all this stuff works. Get to use this TK Gen Fill panel and see how it works for you. And then I believe starting November 1st, that's when Adobe will start rolling out credits. We'll all have a certain amount of credits depending on what 
Adobe plan we have. So take advantage now while we have time to really experiment. I'll click OK again, and now my prompt here is updated. And now let's generate again and see what this result looks like. So I'll click Generate. OK, now here's our first result. And notice my Properties panel here. I'm still using the same layer. I have my original generations here, and now I have my new cut paper ones. So here's my first one. If I click the right arrow, here's the second. That one's cool. Here is the third. And now if I click this again, I go to the fourth, which is actually the first one I did. And here's my second one. Here's my third one. And again, now we can toggle up through here. And here's my cut paper. But let's experiment some more. I'll click on Inspiration again. And this time I will click on Cut Paper Art again to uncheck it. And now it's gone. And this time, let's use Claymation. Who doesn't like Claymation, right? I'll click OK. And now this prompt is updated. Let's generate again. All right, there's my first result. And let's check the second result by clicking this arrow right here. Here's the second result. That one's pretty interesting. And here's my third. I really like this one. Now these numbers are like, they read from the top down as you start to build these images up here. Like this is one, two, three. And this would be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I believe. So let's check it out. Here's three. Okay, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And they're all right here. And I'm only utilizing one layer here, which is nice. I'll do another example in a second, but I just want to point out one more time. I'm going to go to my TK9 combo panel and click on size. And as I said earlier, this is only a 1408 pixel by 1024. Now, right now, this image is 72 DPI or pixels per inch, which would give me like a 19 by 14 inch print, which believe me, that sounds big, but at that resolution, it would not be very good. So I'm going to click cancel here. But what I would do, you can either upsize these in Photoshop, but I recommend a product like Topaz Gigapixel AI or Topaz Photo AI to upsize these images if you wanted to print them. And then you could change the DPI to a proper size for your printer. In my case, I would change mine to like a uh, 360 DPI for the print. And then I could upsize this image up to six times larger than it already is which would give me a nice size print. Well, let's go ahead and try another example. I'll click on Inspiration again. And this time, now you could come up in here and add to this prompt if you want to. In other words, you could like, or click after the comma and then type something else in here. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is, but let's go ahead and I'll uncheck Claymation and let's do something else this time. Let's do, let's do Impressionism. I'll click on Impressionism and I'll click OK, and we'll see what we get this time. Let me click on Generate. Now that's really cool, very impressionistic looking. Here's my first example, here's my second. That one's nice too, and here is my third. Man, I do like them all. So far I'm pretty happy with everything it's generating for me. Let's try one more example, but I think you're seeing how powerful this inspiration is, this new addition to the TK Gen Fill panel. Let's click on Inspiration again, and this time I will uncheck Impressionism by clicking on Impressionism or the checkbox. Either way, it works. And let's try one more, and let's try Stained Glass. I'll click on Stained Glass, click OK. The prompt is updated here. Click Generate, and we'll see what we get. Wow, now that's pretty impressive. It definitely looks like Stained Glass. So there's our first example. I'll click the right arrow. Here's the second example, another really good one, and here is the third example. So all pretty good. Now remember, you can expand these canvases, make them larger. You can use the new feature in the TK Gen Fill panel where we can use these different percentages to blend something in. Maybe we don't like this butterfly, we could take it out. But you can go back and watch my other TK Gen Fill panel videos and see how I can add elements in and see how these opacity buttons work. So check those out. I'll link one of those videos at the end of this video so you can go back and check that out. Now I have to say for myself, this inspiration button here is fantastic. I'll tell you what, now you have no reason not to really get in here and create some really great images using the TK Gen Fill panel because you have all these different options here to pick from, which will really help you to take your 
image generation to a whole new level. Hey, let me know what you think about this new update for the TK Gen Fill panel. I really want to hear from you, and I'm sure Tony Kuiper would love to hear from you. And this is a labor of love from Tony Kuiper, so also let Tony know how much you appreciate this free TK Gen Fill panel. I think it is awesome what Tony has created here. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as well. So let us know in the comments section below. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today, this first look at the new TK Gen Fill Panel Update version 1.4.0, now with inspiration. So I hope you really get to try out this new panel. Don't forget to download it. It's totally free. And give it a test drive and see what you think. And I'm sure you're going to get a lot of great and amazing results using it. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon and click all so you'll receive all notifications. And that way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing!